which is a terrible thing to admit on a show like mine, where I tend to try and tell what I think is really going on and what's important on a daily basis. But it's depressing a lot of people, which is why they're tuning out. Instead, they're paying attention to silly things. You know, I was in San Francisco on Saturday. I spent the day in the city. In the middle of the day, there were thousands of young idiots walking around dressed up as Santa and Santa Ets. The same in New York. Morons running around getting drunk from morning till night. I didn't mean drunk in the streets dressed as Santa. And I looked at it and I said to myself, now you know why Islam is rising and why the West is dying. I, I said that to myself. If a person is a religious person and they see healthy looking 20 something kids running around like idiots dressed up as Santa Claus getting drunk all day, what are you going to do? Get agitated over it? You say, weren't you young once? So you say, yeah, I was young once, but there's something wrong with this picture. How could you have so many thousands of fools dressed up as Santa running around the streets getting drunk in America and not see that it's a symptom of a greater problem? I said to myself, did you see them where you live? Where do you live? Oh, I live in Arizona. But, yeah, I mean, like... And there I, were no drunk Santas wa wandering around the cacti? <laughs> uh, not with caps, but, yeah, everyone just wants to watch football and get drunk and ignore everything, but it's... You so you're, you're lonely right now, right? You're alone mainly. That's your biggest problem. I can hear that, right? You have no one to talk to? Uh, yeah, I mean, my girlfriend and I, we're going through problems right now. And, you know. uh -huh. All right, well, you're not alone with that. The holidays are a big breakup time. The holidays are a very big breakup time for people, uh, Mike. And you're not I tell you something else, you know. Years ago, people dared to admit that they were lonelier during the holidays than during other times of the year because they see other people allegedly looking busy and happy and being invited to parties. And they're not, they're alone and they get very depressed. I think that's what you're going through. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, where is your girlfriend now? What, she left you or you left her or what? Oh, well, we've been in a long distance relationship for a couple of years now. And um, I don't know, we've just kind of grown apart recently. Um, no, wait, what do you mean by long distance relationship? You were never, you were never with her altogether? No, not like all the time. Like she lived in Sacramento, and so we'd see each other maybe every couple months or so. You know, spend a few days together. But you and know. how did, how can that even be a relationship? You know, I mean, that's. I guess you hoped that one day you'd be together, right? And now you know it's not going to happen. How old are you? I just turned twenty-five. Oh, you're a youngster. I could be your Dutch uncle and say, "Look, yes, it's heartache. Yes, you're going to remember everything about her, and you're going to glorify." the good times, and you're going to forget the other times. You're going to forget the bad times. You're going to take everything that was good and magnify it into, like, permanence. And you're going to forget the bad times because that's what you do. That's a, no a normal human thing to do, but it's not the reality of it. I mean, I can guarantee you if you were together every minute of every day, you wouldn't be feeling this way uh, right now. And I'll say again what you already know. There are plenty of fish in the sea. Is she the only one in the world for you, do you think? Um... I don't know. Maybe yes, you're, you're going to say yes. You're going to say yes, she was the only one. God sent her down. She was perfect. I don't know why it didn't work out. Why am I being punished? I know those are the thoughts you're having right now, correct? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm just... Right, well, I'm not laughing at you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be a cynic here and, and, and mock you like a guy who's just laughing. I'm not laughing at you. Heartache is real. Heartache is as real as it comes. But you have to remember that it's also based upon a false remembrance of a relationship that hardly existed. Yeah, I guess that's true. I mean, I mean, we talked every day. It's not like, you know. All right, so you miss the companionship even on the phone. I get that. She was a part of your mental landscape. So you don't even have the buddy anymore, the phone buddy, right? Um, not as much now. We still talk. Do you do you Mike before Hold on. I don't want to spend all day on this, but you're you're as important to me as anyone else. So let me ask you this. Do you have friends outside of that girl? Yeah, a couple, not very many, but a couple. All right, no, no one has very many. You have one or two people you could say you're close enough to express your pain to? Yeah, sure. Do they know about what you're going through? Um, not really, I try. No, because you see, you're a typical guy and you don't want to admit it. You don't want to sound like you're, 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 you're feeling this because you won't think you're as much as a, of a male, right? Yeah. I just I, right, and you no, no. I I get it. I look. I'm an older guy. You can tell me these things. The thing is, is that you think that other guys don't go through these things. You're afraid to admit it. Let me tell you something. If a guy's really your friend, 
he he should have the time for for you to sit down with you and have a beer and say, look, I'm really sick right now. My heart's killing me. You know, I'm not together with her. I remember all these things and, and talk it through. It'll it'll take a while. It's not going to happen with one one night. Then eventually, what's going here's what's going to happen though, Mike. He is not going to get tired of hearing it. You're going to get tired of hearing your own voice whining about the loss of this girl, and you're going to stop doing it. What's going to happen is you're going to become tired of talking about her, and you're going to stop talking about her. And that'll be the day that you start to heal. I'm telling you how it's going to be. The, the all-knowing savage just saved you from heartache. It's not going to go on forever. Mike, it's not going to go on forever. Right now you think that there's a chasm that you will never, ever cross. You're on one side, she's on the other, and there's nothing but a canyon that falls down into Hades itself. It's not the way it is. It's not the way it is. There are other people out there. You can find them. If you found one, you can find another. It's not like you're a guy who was alone and never had a girlfriend. Am I correct? You're not like a real weirdo loser. Oh, uh, well, before her, I did never have a girlfriend. I was in my early 20s, and she was my first. So, I mean, that's probably... Oh, so it's even worse because you think she's the only one, right? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm more depressed about the world situation rather than her. Like, it's really... Well, it's hard to say. You know, people tend to wrap up their personal emotions in world events sometimes, and it's very hard to segregate out which is really operational in terms of the overall sense of the, uh, the overall emotional package that you're dealing with. Mike, let me send you a Christmas gift. I'm sending you a beautiful copy of Government Zero. Take it to a bar and read it in a bar and see maybe you'll attract a decent American conservative girl. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Not waiting for anybody. She's doing what she wants to do, that's all. I know, you, you thought that for the rest of your life you'd sit on a couch together and listen to Uncle Savage. You'd go to movies, you'd watch television, you'd get a little puppy, you'd have a decent job, and you'd brush her hair over her ear, and neither of you would ever get sick or yell at each other. Right. Right. Ann Smith writes on Facebook, Dr. Savage, I love your segment today on being Uncle Savage. It brings out a side of you I love to hear. Your advice is so, inter <laughs> so interesting. I actually enjoyed that call with that poor guy, that lonely guy out there. I felt like I finally did something useful today. It's a weird day for me. I'm telling you, I'm not interested in the news. I don't care about the election. I can't stand the primaries. I'm not going to watch the debates. So I did a lifestyle segment. I, I took one lonely guy. Maybe I helped him a little bit. I don't know. It's a weird day. Time seems like it's moving slowly. I'm telling you, I'm never, this is a, it's odd. There's like a time space continuum warp today. Everything's moving slowly. I don't know. Maybe it was, I should have stayed in bed this morning, but the dog had to pee. I would have slept another two hours. I didn't want to get up. It was freezing. Cold. I don't sleep with the heat on. The wind came in off the bay. It was a perfect morning to not get out of bed. Then I made the mistake. I said, all right, the dog's going to make on the flight, whatever. Now he's sleeping and I'm eating my heart out on the radio. Go figure that one out. I'll be back here. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. This is a bad version. This was like a live job, probably in a bad nightclub in Cleveland somewhere. Go ahead, play. It's a bad one. I never liked him. Turn it off. I'm getting a headache listening to him. There's one piece that's manic -y enough to play. It's like... Gene Krupa on the drums, you know, it's so fast and frenetic and it lights your brain up for a minute. But if it's a bad version in a club in a little town somewhere, forget about it. It doesn't work. Welcome to the show hour three. Bingo. News, forget it. Not interested. Whatever news I was interested in, I did already. And there is no breaking news. It's like jingle bells already. The brains are, the brains are shut down. Jay Johnson still has his job, even though 
even though he failed us with San Bernardino and how many other terrorist events, because he didn't want to upset anybody by looking into their social media, he still has his job. Seven-year-old girls are still being raped to death in Iraq, and Obama says nothing about it. Said they're worried about shrimp peeling. So that's why I shifted to something else, which is uh, lifestyle. I'm going to be Uncle Mike because the news is so depressing and boring, and you've all heard it anyway, and what's the point? So if you would like me to be Uncle Savage and answer your lifestyle questions, I'll give it a shot, 855-407-282. No one else in the history of radio could do this. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you do like it. I like it, if I can help you. WJR, Steve, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hey, I'm a new listener, and I just heard you talk to that young kid. I've been divorced twice, and I just wanted him to know that, you know, uh, take care of yourself, exercise, read your Bible, and uh, you'll get through it. I mean, I, I really appreciate doing what, doing what you're doing. I'm so grateful that I've found you on the radio. Well, let me ask you, Steve, hold it. You divorced twice. Did I, The advice I gave him, don't you think it's true, though, what I said? Absolutely. In other words, he thinks it's the only girl in the world, and that he lost her, he's never going to meet another one. That's not true, is what I'm saying. It's not true at all. Now, so you, but you got married twice. I'm on my third marriage. <laughs> God. Well, we don't we we don't want to go there. But does it all start out the same way? With like, you think it's going to be roses forever? Absolutely. So, what goes wrong in a marriage? Where does it start? She brushes her teeth in front of you, and that's the beginning of the end. <laughs> I think uh, we all. Uh, See, I, I got to tell you something. If you want your marriage to last, I highly recommend not two sinks in one bathroom, but two bathrooms. This is the biggest breakdown point in any relationship: is sharing a bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm serious. When did when did your first marriage break down? What happened? Oh, geez, uh, uh, just the immaturity. Okay, second marriage. What caused that to come apart? Oh, man. Some of the same things. Partying a little too much. Just a little too much stupid living. What, like Santa outfits on Saturday morning, getting drunk, whatever. So now you think this is the right one, this third marriage? Absolutely. We're both Christians. She her, she has a heritage uh, from Armenia. And um, we're very much into... Uh, our spirituality with Christ and and uh, uh, well, are you are you also of Armenian heritage? Scottish. I'm sorry, I couldn't. Are you also of Armenian heritage? Scottish and the Nether Netherlands. So, what does the Armenian part of her relate uh, heritage have to do with you? Well, I just love the bump on her nose, and I just wanted to. <laughs> oh, come on now! Are you being serious? So you you like you like Semites, do you? Well, she's beautiful, and um, I'm just grateful. Look, the main thing is that you're in love with this woman, and you want this one to work, because you don't want to do this again. How old are you now, Steve? I'm 52. Oh, you're not a kid. You see, I'm the voice of a 30-something. It must be all those good drugs you used all those years. That, uh, well, that were, you helped you retain helped you retain your youth. All right, but in your 50s, you're not going to make the same mistakes you made in your 20s and 30s, are you? Absolutely not. All right, so what advice would you give to a young guy out there in his 20s whose girlfriend left him and he's lonely and he's depressed and he thinks it's the world's problems when it's really his own emotional problems that are getting to him? What would you tell him to do? Oh, you just uh, the lifestyle. I mean, you got to eat right, you got to take exercise. And, um,. I don't know if he's yeah, well, Christian. I'm, I'm going to give everyone listening to this show a, an instant hit. He has instant anti-depression advice. Powdered vitamin C, let's say a gram or two, and then run around the block a few times. It'll go right across your blood-brain barrier faster than you could imagine. You know that vitamin C crosses the blood-brain barrier faster than heroin? Did you know that? I did not know that. Yeah, no, that's part of my background in the biomedical sciences, particularly in nutrition. It's an amazing antidepressant. All right, Steve, because you're a new listener, I'm giving you a special Christmas present, Government Zero. Phone number is 855-400-7282 is the phone number. Here we go. Here's a great call. Line of four. Now we're, now we're cooking. Al, what's on your mind? Hey, Uncle Mike, I wanted to talk to you about cars. 
Uh, Good. That's what I want to hear. Let's be American. Let's talk about cars. I love car shows. 